All right, let's start. <coughs> okay, good afternoon. Uh, okay, we'll be continuing with the solution to the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. So last time we started out with the differential equation. Unfortunately, we'll have to uh, go through some amount of algebra. Uh, the time independent Schrodinger equation, uh, remember, is for the, the radial equation looks like minus h bar squared or 2m d squared dr squared. This is the kinetic energy term. Then there is something which goes like, okay, angular momentum. Uh, <coughs> This is the centrifugal term, right? And then there is the potential term, which is E over 4 pi epsilon 0 r. So all of that operating on U, remember what U is, the radial uh, function r is equal to U of r over r. So this is the equation for U of r equals E U. Okay, so that's when we write the equation for U, this is what we get. Okay, we get uh, something which looks very much like the one-dimensional Schrodinger equation, but the centrifugal term, and this is the potential. Okay, then we divided everything by E, okay, to get stuff which is unitless. So let me just put with my hand over here E, and then we set up set of variables. Okay, we said let's take E to be equal to minus h bar squared k squared over 2m. So k, obviously this k squared is positive, so E has to be a negative quantity. That's what the, the way we set this up so that we look at the bound states of the uh, system. Okay, so if you put that in, then you are going to get a, an equation which looks like 1 over k squared, d squared, d r squared. Uh, okay, everything changes sign because <coughs> E uh, has this minus sign associated with it when I go to the variable k. So this is going to be minus L, L plus 1 over uh, k squared, r squared. And this will also uh, change sign, so this will be uh, plus E over uh, 4 pi epsilon 0 r. Uh, and then I have to put in my E, which is minus h bar squared uh, k squared over 2m and r is still there, okay? So, and then I can move this u to the left-hand side of the equation, and that's what I get, okay? So, uh, please check my algebra. I uh, am sure I'm going to make several mistakes today. It's a considerable amount of algebra. Yes? Uh, e squared, yes, good. So we start with a mistake in the first line. Just okay, so uh, let's then, okay, what we do then is we say k times r uh, is equal to a unitless quantity rho, and we end up with uh, d squared, d rho squared, uh, minus l, l plus 1 rho squared, and then we have plus uh, how many? E squared m over 2 pi epsilon 0 h bar squared k times rho. Okay, one of the k's are, is absorbed into uh, <coughs> the rho. Uh, minus 1 u is equal to 0. Okay? So, uh, now, 
we just go through some standard analysis at this stage. Okay, so we don't know how U is going to behave. Let's look at its asymptotic behavior. So what we do is we look at uh, the small values of rho. When I look at the small values of rho, the I always want to keep the, keep this d squared, the rho squared u term. Okay, that's the differential equation. Okay. And then the term that's going to dominate, okay, the, uh, among the, those three terms is the one over rho squared term, right? When rho is very small, one over rho squared term is going to dominate. So this is going to be approximately equal to L, L plus one uh, times, okay, over rho squared, L u over rho squared. So this says the second derivative of u is two powers less and has a coefficient l times l plus one. Okay? So what does it look like? Yeah. Hmm? Natural logarithm. Natural, no, not natural logarithm. u to the n times u to the n solution. Okay, this is something like polynomial, but okay, so what you can see is that this u then is going to be something like rho to the L plus one, because first derivative of this will bring down an L plus one. The second derivative is going to bring down an L, and it will be two powers less, right? But this being a second degree equation, there will be a second equation, second solution. It will be rho to the minus L, okay? So if you differentiate that, you get minus uh, L rho to the minus L minus one, one more derivative, you get L, L plus one, uh, rho to the minus L minus two. <coughs> so that's also a solution, okay? But we are interested in solutions which behave properly at the origin. So we do not want this, okay? So we throw that away, okay? That's going to give us some divergent, uh, even L equal to zero. Even if you take L equal to zero, you see we are interested in U over R over R, so uh, we don't want that. Okay, <laughs> so that's that. Uh, for large row, what happens? Then I have D squared, D row squared, U goes like, okay, which term should I keep? Yes, one, okay, because the others will be small. So that will be proportional to u. So again, this is a very simple equation. So u will go either like e to the minus rho or, or e to the plus rho. But e to the plus rho, it's not again, I don't like that. So I am going to keep that. Okay, so the standard procedure at this point is to say, well, I now have found asymptotic forms of this <coughs> function u. So let me write this u of rho as rho to the L plus one. So that's how it's going to behave near zero times e to the minus rho. So that's how it's going to behave at infinity. Okay, obviously it can't be that. It has to do something else in the middle. So the rest of the stuff I just group into V over O. Okay, so obviously I can always do something like this. I can put here a sine function if I like, but now I have to find the uh, equation, differential equation for V. And what I am hoping is that this V will behave better. Okay, remember we did the same, practically the same type of uh, analysis when we were discussing the harmonic oscillator, okay, in the harmonic oscillator, again, uh, we just <laughs> looked at the asymptotic forms. Uh, there was a Gaussian tail, which we factored out and so forth. So we are going to do the same thing now with this function. So that means we are going to put this u into that differential equation. 
and obtain a new differential equation for V and try to solve that. Hopefully, that will have, okay, more easily uh, available solutions. Okay, so uh, we put that in there. Okay, uh, there is one term which is going to generate lots of terms, that's the second derivative term, right? So I have to be careful about that. So I have to find the second derivative of u with respect to rho, okay? So let's start, okay? So here comes the more error-prone part of the algebra. Okay, so <coughs> let's start. Uh, let's first find the first derivative. The first derivative is going to be, there are three terms, L plus one, rho to the L, okay, e to the minus rho V. Then I have the second term, that's easy, that's just exponential, rho to the L plus one, e to the minus rho, okay, so that's the only that does, brings in a minus sign, v, and then I have plus rho to the l plus 1, e to the minus rho v prime, right? So I just differentiate each one of them. Let me group some terms here because now I need the second derivative. Okay, so let me pull out the rho to the l and e to the minus rho out of all of this. So that will give me l plus 1 okay, minus rho from this term times v, and then I have plus rho v prime, right? Please check my algebra. Okay, now comes the second derivative. Okay, so second derivative, I'll just evaluate this one times that one, and then, okay, derivative of this times that, and then this times derivative of that. Okay, so let's first evaluate the derivative of this. So this is going to be L rho to the L minus one, e to the minus rho, okay? And then minus rho to the L, e to the minus rho, okay? So this derivative of that times this thing, I will not touch that, L plus 1 minus rho V plus rho V prime plus I'm going to get this thing, rho to the L e to the minus rho and then the derivative of the bracket. So that's going to be, okay, a number of terms, <coughs> minus V when I differentiate this, I get minus one times V, and then plus L plus one minus rho times V prime, okay, plus V prime, okay, plus rho V double prime. Okay, so at this point you might think, why are we doing this? Okay, trying to simplify something when things are not going that way. But, okay, something that we have to go through. How, how did we get minus V? How did we get minus V? Okay, it's the derivative of this term with respect to rho okay. times V, okay? But good, you know, keep on checking. Okay, so let's again factor out this rho to the L. Okay, rho to the L, e to the minus rho stuff. Okay, because, okay, so I have rho to the L minus one here, so it's going to give me L over rho minus one, right? And then this whole thing, I'll just, I, L plus one minus rho, V plus rho V prime. 
And then I have this stuff here, which is minus V uh, plus L plus 1 minus rho, okay, times V prime plus another V prime plus rho V double prime. Okay, uh, so believe it or not, I'm going to multiply this out. Okay, so rho to the L e to the minus rho. Okay, let's multiply this out. <coughs> I'll first multiply by uh, L over rho, then by minus 1. Okay, so help me out. This term times that one is L times L plus 1 over rho. Okay, this times that. Then I have minus L. Okay, this times that. Okay, so I'm really keeping this separate from the other one. Okay, then I have minus, just minus 1 times this, so that's going to be minus L plus 1 minus rho times V. Okay, so it's just the multiplication of this with the first term. Now I have multiplication of this with the second term. So that's going to be what? Plus L V prime. I think you jumped the V previously. Where? Over here. Yes, yes thank you. And over here. Okay. So minus that. Okay, and so now we are doing this. L V prime minus rho V prime. Okay, so a bunch of other terms. Minus V. Let me combine these two V primes. So I get plus L plus 2 minus rho V prime plus rho V double prime. Okay. So uh, let me now group terms which are going to have same orders of derivative, okay? So I'll try to squeeze it over here. So it's going to be rho to the L, e to the minus rho, okay, multiplying everything. So let me write the second derivative first, rho v double prime, okay? So I have taken care of this. And then and there will be a bunch of v prime terms, so plus v prime times, let me in fact break the nice bracket, v prime times what? Okay, I have <laughs> L plus 2 minus rho, but then I have another L here and another minus rho here. Okay, so this is going to be 2L and minus 2 rho. So this is going to be, in fact, equal to twice, right? 2L plus 1 minus rho times V prime. Okay, so I've taken care of these, this stuff. All right. And finally, I have something which will multiply V. Okay, so I have a minus LV here, minus LV there. <coughs> And I have a minus V there and a minus V there. So that's going to give me what? Uh, plus rho minus 2L minus 2V, right? Right? 
minus v, minus v. OK. So then that's my u double prime. OK? Jim, there is one more term in L. Rash. Oh, yes. Very important. Thank you. So over here, I have to put in plus L, L plus 1 over rho. OK. All right. So uh, we had our equation down there, but now it's time to put all of this into my equation. OK, so let me rewrite it here because you can't see it. d squared d rho squared uh, minus l l plus 1 uh, over rho squared plus the potential term e squared m over 2 pi epsilon 0. OK, that term, let me write one more time, but we are going to call it something because I don't want to carry that along. OK, rho. OK, so this thing, I'm going to just uh, rename it rho 0 or rho, so that uh, rho 0 is going to be equal to whatever I have here, m e squared over 4 2 pi 2 pi epsilon 0 h bar squared k. OK, so that's something that we need later. OK, and then I have a minus 1. Everything operating on u. OK, and u was what? Rho to the L plus 1 e to the minus rho v overall is equal to 0. OK? So that's just the first term that I have here. OK, so let me just write that down. So I'll pull a rho to the L, e to the minus L out of all of this. So the first term is rho v double prime plus v prime 2 l plus 1 minus rho, OK, plus v, OK, rho minus 2 l minus 2 plus l l plus 1 over rho. OK, so that's the first term. Then I have the second term, which is going to be careful because there's a rho to the l plus 1 here, and I have factored out a rho to the l. So I have to multiply that term by rho. So it will be minus l l plus 1 over rho, OK, plus OK, just row 0, because I'm multiplying by row, and minus row, OK? So that that multiplied by that gives me that. E to the minus and, row. Hmm? E to the minus row. E to the minus row, thank you. And I need v's all over here. V, v, v. OK, so now we have some cancellation, OK? So that term cancels that term. And that term cancels that term. So you notice which terms are getting canceled. The terms that are canceled are this one and that one. So those are the terms that we used when we were trying to find the asymptotic behavior. But now because we have put in the asymptotic behavior already in here. Those terms cancel, OK? So 
the V itself is going to have different behavior, obviously. Okay, so all of this thing equal to zero, so I can now cancel this term out. So now I have a simpler equation. Let me just write that down. So rho times d squared v, d rho squared, plus 2l plus 1 minus rho dv d rho. Okay, now minus 2l plus 2. Okay, I pulled out a minus, so I'm going to get a minus rho 0 v is equal to 0. Okay, so now that's my new differential equation. Now I hope, okay, my hope in doing all of this was to be able to get a simpler equation or simpler result for v. So what I do is I say, well, okay, uh, let me just uh, assume that I can expand this around rho equal to zero, okay? And <laughs> assume a solution of the form, okay, V of rho is equal to a series, J from zero to somewhere. I don't know, it could go to infinity, but it will turn out just like in the harmonic oscillator case that we'll have to cut this off, okay? Of <laughs> uh, rho, well, let's make the coefficient first, a sub j rho to the j, okay? So I'll just assume that I can expand this, okay? Because the uh, rho to the L plus one dependence has been factored out. So what remains there must start from something like a constant, I hope, okay? And that's what I have. So the problem is, can, will this satisfy an equation of that form? Okay, or what, what must these a's be so that it satisfies this equation? Okay, so v prime is going to be, obviously, the sum over j, uh, j, a j, uh, rho to the j minus one, and v double prime is going to be equal to sum over j, okay, j, j minus one, uh, a j rho to the j minus two. Okay, so now let's put all of that into our new differential equation. Any questions? Any, any corrections, which is more important? Actually, I, at some, some point, I should really check my notes to make sure that this is correct. Uh, okay, let, let, let's just go on. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. The first term here is rho times the second derivative of v. So I'm just going to multiply this by rho. So I'm going to get the <coughs> uh, first term is going to be sum over j. Uh, it was j, j minus one, a j, rho to the minus two, j to the minus two, but now it's going to be j to the minus one because I'm multiplying it by rho, okay? So that term is there. So then I have plus okay, two, okay, I have to be careful because part of it has a L plus one term and the other one has a uh, rho term. So the two plus one term is going to be multiplied by j, j 
a j, okay, rho to the j minus 1, okay, so this is, this thing here is just v prime, right, but then this piece here minus 2 is being multiplied by the same thing, but it's also being multiplied by uh, rho. Right, so this thing here is rho times v prime. Okay. And this piece is easy because that's just uh, minus what? 2L plus 2 minus rho 0. Okay. Times. Uh, a j rho to the j. So that must be equal to zero. Okay, so the standard stuff is to, uh, you see these are powers to j minus one. So what I do is, since j is a dummy index, I replace wherever I see a j, okay, I set it equal to j plus one. Okay, so that's going to fix that up. So let's just do that. So it's going to be, now, formally really, I have to do the same thing in the series also. So I have to put a j plus one here. And what that will do is it will start this series from j equal to minus one. Okay, but when I put j equal to j plus one, let's just discuss that. It's going to go to j, j plus one, a, j plus 1 rho to the j. Okay, so but if you now put c j equal to minus 1, really put a 0 coefficient there. Okay, so I can just remove this minus 1 and it's still was it equal to j. Okay, so that's that, that's the first term. Plus 2 l plus 1 Okay, I have to do the same thing over here, sum over j, j plus 1, okay, a j plus 1, rho to the j, minus, okay, I have, uh, let me just put all of these things under the same summation, j, so it's going to be 2L two, two plus 2 minus rho 0 minus 2J. Not too worried about this 2. <coughs> AJ, J, rho equals 0. Uh, let's see where did that come from. I just want to make sure I'm not making any mistakes at this point. Okay, let's, let's just go on. Let's see what happens. <coughs> okay, so uh, the standard argument now is that I can write this as a single summation, okay, and say that this is uh, j times j plus 1 uh, <clears throat> plus 2L plus 1, right, times j plus 1 multiplied by a j plus 1 minus 2L plus 2 minus rho 0 minus 2J, okay, AJ, everything multiplied by rho to the J is 0. Okay, so this must satisfy the differential equation for all values of rho, which means that this object here this means this curly bracket here must be equal to zero for 
all values of AJs. So that gives you a relation between AJ plus 1 and AJ. Okay, so this tells you that AJ plus 1 is equal to, I have this 2L plus 2 minus rho 0 minus 2J. I don't like that 2, uh, but let's just go on. And in the denominator, I have J times J plus 1. Maybe it's okay. Okay, J times J plus 1 plus 2L plus 1, J plus 1, AJ. Okay, so uh, that's then what it is. All right, so the <laughs> argument again is that you can just, uh, can I just start with some AJ, A0, and go all the way to infinity? Okay, so can I let this be? Okay, so suppose I <laughs> start with some A0, and then from A0 determine what A1 is, then from A1 determine what A2 is, and so on. Okay, since the linear equation, I can start at a0 equal to 1 because I'll have to normalize this in the end anyway. Okay, <clears throat> so if I start with 2, everything will just be multiplied by 2. So I might as well start with 1. And then I just go step by step and generate higher and higher order stuff. Now, the uh, problem is if I do that, you see a j plus 1 I have a problem with signs, that's why I'm a little worried about. Okay, so what happens for large j? For large j, I am going to get a j plus 1, then large j dom dom dominates, and I am going to get what? Uh, Approximately 1 over j squared. Well, I have a j here. Okay, so it's going to go like, I want it to go like 2 over j actually, but uh, there's a minus sign which I don't like. Plus j. I'm a little worried about the sign or that. Can you trace the sign? It's going to be plus. Where? Where is um, In there, um, it's minus 2j, but there's also a minus sign in front of it, so... Okay, minus, 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 so that's okay. Yeah, which should give us plus. No, but I'm moving this on the other side of the equation, right? right. Okay, so that doesn't count, so... That j, where does it come from? Uh, a j minus 2j, okay, and that is minus 2j over here. So, uh, hmm? why? Where? Why going first, second line, we made the center. From first? Second. Second, oh, okay. That's very good. That saves my life, okay. All right, so now that becomes 2 over j. Now that means, if that's the case, then I am going to get a function out of here, which goes like e to the 2 rho. Okay, because a j will go like 2 to the j over j factorial. Okay, and 2 to the j over j factorial will give you e to the 2 rho. 
So what is happening here? Again, if you let this go all the way to infinity, you are recovering, okay, this, okay, e to the plus rho solution that we sort of, okay, try to eliminate. Uh, so this is just waking up from its ashes and sneaking in into our solution. So I cannot allow that to extend all the way to infinity. It must be cut off someplace. Okay, so how do I cut it off? Uh, I am going to need to put in a maximum value for j. Okay, so I am going to choose this term in the numerator in such a way that it becomes zero for a certain value of j. Okay, so how can I do that? I can do that by choosing this row zero, okay, properly. So I am going to set row zero so that Okay, the numerator 2L plus 2 minus rho 0, okay, 2 plus 2N, okay, is equal to 0. So what does that do? If I just do that, when I come to the nth A, this will make A n plus 1 equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to end up with a polynomial. Very nice. It's going to satisfy the equation because it satisfies this recursion relation. And what is that relation? Okay, I'm going to get 2L uh, plus Okay, so let me factor some stuff out here. Uh, so if I choose my row zero, so that it's equal to uh, twice two, no two anymore, L plus one plus capital N. Okay. This then gives me a truncation at the level n. All right, this is clear. This is something that we do quite commonly, okay? So we take the uh, asymptotic forms out, and what remains is usually some sort of polynomial, uh, and then we can <coughs> use that polynomial to various orders. But now what does this mean? What does this rho zero equal to something like that mean? Well, that means I'm going to get rho zero equal to this quantity. Okay, so remember what rho zero was. It's right over here. It's equal to m e squared over two pi epsilon zero h bar k, h bar squared k. Right? Now let me try to relate that to energy because I am going to uh, see how that behaves in terms of the energy. Okay, there's this term here, which is L plus one plus N, which is going to determine what the energy is. Energy is hidden inside this K. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this thing, this whole thing, which is another integer, I'm going to call it small n. Okay, so that small n will be related to my energy. Obviously, it will be related also where the cutoff is and what L is and such things. But uh, this small n will be the number that enters into the energy. So let me square both sides. So what do I get? I get 4n squared is equal to m squared e to the 4, okay, 4 pi squared, epsilon 0, h bar to the 4th, 
k squared. And in place of k squared, okay, so remember that energy is equal to minus h bar squared k squared over 2m. So k squared is equal to minus 2m e or h bar squared. Okay, so let's put that in. So it's going to give me a minus sign, minus m squared e to the 4, 4 pi squared epsilon 0 h bar to the 4, and k squared is 2 m e over h bar squared. All right, so we are almost there. Uh, so let me move the energy to the left hand side. So energy is going to be equal to dividing through by 4, 4, 4, 16 times 2 is 32 pi squared. There's an epsilon 0 squared, right? And I square this. Epsilon 0 squared h bar squared one factor of m in the numerator e squared but now i also have an n squared here okay and there's a minus sign Sorry. yes Sorry, have three in the it's 32. Mm. Ah, okay. 32 okay four times four times two okay e to the 4. Hmm? Sorry. Okay. I started the cancel two powers of e. Two powers of e? You wrote e square once there. Well, right. now, now it isn't there anymore. Okay. Okay, so I can now put e n here. Okay, so this is the energy levels that you obtain. In fact, you, the, this was obtained earlier by, by Bohr, by some sort of accidental, actually, uh, calculations. And what you get is, okay, there are not too many numbers that you have to really memorize in uh, quantum mechanics, but this is a famous number that's good to know. It's 13.6 electron volts divided by n squared. Okay, so n equal to 1, which is the lowest energy level, because as you increase n to higher and higher values, you are going to get, okay, uh, smaller and smaller, okay, in magnitude negative numbers. So the lowest energy level is minus 13.6 electron volts. That's the n equal to 1 case. And then n equal to 2, okay, the first excited state is minus 13.6 electron volts divided by 4, okay, and so on. So these things, uh, you have an infinite number of bound states, as you get closer and closer to zero energy, they all accumulate, they become very close to one another, okay. So this is the characteristic of the Coulomb potential. Now, you see this is, we have to look at this carefully because we said we, had, we can choose n equal to 1 and that gives us the lowest energy level. So n equal to 1 means looking at this object here, the smallest value of capital N where you make a cutoff, what can that be? Hmm? Well, minus L has already been factored out. So what is the lowest cutoff that you can have in this power series? Zero. Zero, right? It's just A zero. If you have just a constant and you want to cut it off after that, you just get zero. So the smallest number that you can have is zero, okay? So that means for N equal to one, the only L value that you can have is L equal to zero, okay? Now for N equal to two, okay, if this is equal to two, then I can cut off at N equal to zero, 
but then L has to be equal to 1. Or I can cut off, okay, so <laughs> this implies if I, this is L equal to 0, then this is just N equal to 0, right? This is the highest power of the polynomial. For N equal to 2, I can have, again, L equal to 0, okay, but then what must, what is N? L is equal to 2, okay, then N must be equal to what? Right, so this is a first order polynomial, but L can also be equal to 1. Okay, so L can be equal to 1, then N is equal to 0. Okay, so these are the N equal to 2 states. L can be 0. Remember, L is the angular momentum index, so this is a non-trivial statement. It says that this lowest energy here can only have a okay zero angular momentum the next n equal to two state can have l equal to zero or l equal to one okay angular momentum state higher up okay this can be the l n equal to three is going to be l equal to zero l equal to one and l equal to two states and as l goes up the <coughs> power of the polynomial gets smaller, okay? So larger, the smallest angular momentum here, okay, corresponds to the highest power polynomial. As you go to higher angular momenta, you are going to get to smaller and smaller <coughs> powers, uh, maximum power in the object, okay? So, uh, well, it's a good place to stop. So next time we are going to discuss these functions a little bit more uh, and then move on.